It began on a frozen river near the family farm, where Walter Gretzky dreamed of hockey glory. This love of the game was passed from father to son. When Walter and Phyllis Gretzky returned to that same frozen stream with their first son, Wayne. It was the beginning of an inspiring journey that the world will never forget. Well, everybody thinks that, that I made a rink in a backyard so that he could be a hockey player, that those were my intentions. The honest truth is, I used to take him to the outdoor rinks. He loved hockey, he loved to skate, and he loved to play. One night I came home and I was literally frozen. So my dad decided that he would build a rink in the backyard, he could sit in the house and I could go out there and skate. I could get all the skating I wanted in and he could uh, stay warm. It was self-preservation, that's the honest truth. I had a passion for it, I don't know why. I didn't think I was practicing. It was something that I just enjoyed and I didn't feel like I was uh, dedicating myself to anything. I didn't feel like I was sacrificing anything. I just felt that that's what I love to do. I always put some pylons uh, out there, just plastic Javix bottles and things like that. And I would stagger them and he would go in and out of them for hours at a time and just in and out. He would never ever tire. And I had a floodlight in the backyard and his mother would say, Walter, Will you please go bring them in the house? It's 10 o'clock. The neighbors are going to think we're all crazy in this house. You know, you get the puck and you go around a pylon. There's always, you know, Gordie Howe goes around the defenseman and scores a winning goal in the Stanley Cup. We all did that. That's what it was all about. When I met Gordie Howe, I was 10 years old. And he was bigger and better and nicer than I ever imagined. And all I did from that moment on was think about one day I'd love to play with Gordie Howe or against Gordie Howe. Even when he was a little boy, you could tell he was going to be special. The first year he ever played, he was six years old. The youngest traveling team we had at that time were ten-year-old boys. He made that team. He scored one goal that year. Four years later for that same team, he scored 378. And these were ten minutes straight time periods. He kept my first hockey team jacket. He collected my first six. My kept my first trophy and I would say why and he said well I just got a feeling one day you know these are going to be things that people are going to want to see I mean he didn't say it to to push me or motivate me he just really believed that he really um, guided me and uh, without question he made me the player that I am today when he got to the Sioux playing junior A and a young man was already wearing number nine. So you certainly can't take that number from someone who was there the previous year. So I was trying to find a comfort zone to what number felt good for me. So I went to Muzz, the coach, and I said, Muzz, I don't really like my number. And, you know, kind of off the cuff, he, he just kind of threw it. He said, well, why don't you wear two nines? And I remember going, wow. I said, yeah, okay, I'll, that's what I'll wear, 99. Muzz said, are you sure, you know, you're going to be a target? I said, Muzz, I already am a target. I remember sitting there, I was petrified, I was so nervous, and uh, I leaned over Gordy, and I, I really believe he was almost sleeping. He kind of has eyes closed, and he was just sitting there before the game, and I said, Gordy, I said, I'm scared to death, and he goes, so am I. I remember saying, oh yeah, right. I remember thinking, oh my goodness. And so he goes, just win the face off, dump it in my corner, and get to the front of the net, and I scored nine seconds into the game, and I remember saying, my gosh, this guy, does he ever end? We were good. You know, now that it's over, you can look back and say, we were good, because we really were. But at the time, we didn't realize that. We were just enjoying it, and we were just playing. There was so much less pressure on us those days uh, that we just went out and did what we did best, and that was just to play hockey. The thing you remember most, and it's always the first time it comes. It's a remarkable feeling that you wish every guy who played in the NHL could experience at one time. But what makes it so remarkable is that not everybody's going to get that chance.
I hope guys break my records because that helps the game, that helps sell the game. One night the phone rang and I said, hello, and he said, dad, it's Wayne. I said, how'd you guys make out tonight? He says, I did it, dad. I said, what'd you do? He said, 50 and 39. And I said, what took you so long? To the side of the net, Taylor to Gretzky, he scores! Wayne Gretzky has tied it and broken Gordy Howe's record. That was probably one of the moments I'll never forget in my career because it just happened bang bang and it was in Edmonton where it deserved to be and where it belonged. Gordy was there and he came on the ice and my dad came out and my wife and it was a real special time. Robitaille coming into Gretzky trailing. Gretzky gets the puck on the right to the Shirley. Center to Gretzky. Scores! Wayne Gretzky! There it is! Number 802! Oh, he scores! Number 830 of his career. Larry, the rebound. Scores! Number 1072! It doesn't matter if you're 38 years old or you're 8 years old. When you look up in the stands, you're in a game and you can see your mother or your wife or your father. That's what it's all about. Just tying up my skates and knowing that I'm going to be on the ice, that was my high every day. I never would have dreamed. He started when he was 6 years old and uh, he retired when he was 38. That's 32 years later. As I was skiing around, I just felt more joy than anything. Every game I played, I played my hardest. I felt proud of my career, and I felt honored that they were cheering for me, but I also knew it was the right thing to do.